All right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, just to say a few words. Uh, welcome to our uh, monthly webinar. Okay. Uh, today we have um, a webinar about the use of uh, ultrasound in neuro emergency setting. Right. Uh, just now we have Dr. Adi, but now we have our second speaker, uh, which is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Hashari Fauzi. Okay, he is an associate professor and also a consultant emergency physician in School of Medicines in USM, uh, Campus Kubang Krian. Uh, like Dr. Adi, his clinical and also research uh, interest is in emergency ultrasound and also emergency critical care. I think currently he is a vice president of Society of Critical, care, critical and Emergency Sonography in Malaysia, success. Okay, his topic uh, of presentation today is the use of uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound uh, in ischemic stroke. I think he will talk about uh, the use of carotid ultrasound as a screening tool to identify causes and risk factors for stroke. Okay, without further ado, I invite uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Hashari to give his talk. Hey, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me, uh, Dr. Ace? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, okay wonderful. So uh, let me share the uh, slide first. Um, okay. Uh, can everyone see my slide? Okay, yes. Okay, okay. Um, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. East, uh, for your kind introduction. And uh, of course, I would like to thank also the uh, uh, Dr. Nina, Dr. Nasina, and uh, Neuro SIG team for inviting me to this uh, webinar. And also, uh, Dr. Adi, our Sifu Lagan, focus guru in, in Malaysia. So, um, I, uh, I like, uh, uh, you know, to see Dr. Adi echo what I've been. Uh, uh, talk earlier uh, when Nina, uh, Dr. Nasrina contacted me to talk about the uh, uh, carotid Doppler. When she messaged me about this topic, uh, if Dr. Adi gave her one wow, uh, I gave her three wow <laughs> because you know the uh, carotid Doppler is uh, something uh, that we, um, you know, uh, not commonly do in our emergency department. Uh, in fact, when uh, I look into this, some of the uh, reference, so focus in uh, carotid Doppler actually uh, is not much uh, uh, discussed before, especially in emergency setting. But uh, for the past uh, one or two years, uh, I think there's a few people talk about the uh, role of carotid Doppler, uh, uh, especially in neuro emergency setting. I think this is uh, uh, the way forward. Uh, when we talk about the carotid Doppler ultrasound, especially in uh, ischemic stroke patient. And um, uh, I think it's a good start for us also, especially uh, uh, about uh, carotid Doppler. Not many people talk about this, especially in focus uh, group about the uh, topic of uh, uh, carotid Doppler. So uh, I hope we can learn together today, uh, uh, talking or discussing about the uh, role of carotid Doppler, especially in uh, ischemic stroke patient. Okay, so uh, for those who are uh, not used to come to Kota Baru or people call Newcastle, uh, Kota Baru. So this is our, uh, actually, uh, in city department, the uh, entrance. And you see here, this uh, our building. Uh, so we welcome uh, for those who come and visit us in uh, Kota Baru. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, not, it's still not too late for me to wish everyone Selamat Hari Raya, Maaf Zahir Nambatin from us uh, in Kota Baru. So for this uh, uh, discussion today, a um, uh, few important points that I want to highlight uh, here. So uh, first we'll discuss about the, the burden uh, we, that we have encountered, uh, uh, especially in managing stroke patients. And uh, second, we're going to dis discuss about the structure, the anatomy and sono uh, structure of the uh, carotid uh, Doppler or carotid ultrasound. 
And thirdly, we're going to also discuss about Basti Doppler. I'm very uh, fortunate when uh, uh, second lecture after Sifu, Dr. Adi. So Dr. Adi have been, you know, uh, discussed a little bit about the uh, basic Doppler because when we talk about TCD and we talk about the carotid Doppler, we can't run away. Uh, we need to perform the uh, spectral uh, uh, Doppler ultrasound. And of course, uh, uh, I'm going to also discuss about the, how we perform the carotid Doppler ultrasound and it's a bit on recent thought about the uh, carotid Doppler. Okay, so um, when we talk about the burden, uh, I guess uh, because in our group here, uh, many, uh, you know, a neuro neurologists also here, uh, neuro emergency also here, I guess you all know better than me about the uh, risk of uh, stroke. Uh, as we can see if your statement from our DG, that's a one in four Malaysian uh, estimated to suffer from the stroke by 2040 is quite scary, uh, you know, a statement. So it is uh, uh, important for us to, you know, recognize or, uh, you know, identify early, uh, especially the risk factor before uh, we develop or uh, if patients suffer the stroke. So we might, uh, you know, uh, uh, with the uh, help of the uh, screening tool. I call screening tool because uh, carotid Doppler, a carotid ultrasound is the good for triage tool like TCD just now to, to uh, help patient to get further management and also for the investigation uh, in terms of the risk factor or recurrent uh, uh, stroke uh, in future. So as uh, we all know about the uh, incidence Per hundred thousand, if we can see here the uh, you know data from I guess uh, our group here know about this data from uh, I think last year published 2020, uh, 2021, but the uh, the data uh, from twenty eight to twenty sixteen uh, the admission year and we see the incident rate per hundred thousand uh, population. Uh, the left side is the main uh, uh, figure, and you can see here the. The, uh, the woman on, on the uh, right side. What you can see here, the uh, on yellow line indicate the uh, ischemic stroke, the uh, green basically hemorrhagic stroke, and a sub I don't know, hemorrhage basically represent the blue line and overall in red line. But what we can see the trend, uh, you know, uh, increasing uh, trend. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, interestingly, what they found that the uh, for a couple of years, uh, the uh, the trend among uh, people that less than sixty five years old uh, getting stroke is uh, become uh, you know uh, higher. So uh, from you know uh, like our age, you know I, I think Dr. Adi is still young, but I mean sixty five years old and below is uh, get the uh, higher risk nowadays to uh, get get the stroke. I think uh, uh, a few uh, factors involved here. Okay, so as, as we all know, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, TIA, uh, which is the uh, roughly about 23%, will have subsequent stroke when they presented to us, and 93% uh, will occurring uh, following seven days of the uh, recurrent stroke. And one of the established uh, co cause is the carotid artery stenosis uh, for both uh, either stroke or TIA, roughly about 10 to 50%. And, and uh, we all know that uh, uh, secondary stroke and death risk can be significantly reduced with carotid revascularization. And most beneficial if stenosis more than 70%, meaning the severe stenosis, if we can uh, detect early and we send early for uh, intervention, uh, actually they can uh, reduce markedly the death risk. Uh, this uh, early recognition is vital for us when a patient presented to uh, emergency department. So, uh, of course, we know the gold standard uh, diagnosis, uh, people talk about the CTA, talk the uh, uh, MRA and, uh, and, and so on and so forth, and of course, uh, the US, the duplex ultrasound. But, uh, uh, of course, like uh, I think Dr. Adi mentioned, uh, all this, uh, uh, especially in resource-limited setting, for example, in a district hospital, the primary care, you know, they have limited access for a CTA, uh, as well as they, uh, to perform the, uh, uh, you know, the duplex ultrasound uh, is operator dependent. So you need a skill uh, sometime to, to have the, you know, uh, to get the view, to get to calculate all this uh, uh, data. And of course, uh, we need some training, uh, you know, to, to get this, but, uh, but the uh, uh, 
uh, with the help of the ultrasound, uh, nowadays, I guess we, we can uh, identify early, at least uh, as a screening tool for us to refer early to a certain discipline. Okay, so which patient, which group of patient we can uh, use the uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound? But uh, what have been advocated is those uh, presented to us uh, a syncope, stroke patient, altered mental state, a TIA, and those having brui, as well as those who are having uh, known stenosis. So this group of people uh, we might consider to perform the uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound. And for uh, purpose of discussion today, uh, I try to you know uh, simplify a little bit. Uh, I think uh, what we want to look for when patient came to us with stroke or TIA or the you know uh, syncope. So uh, I think this too is a major contribution uh, uh, for uh, developing us of uh, of uh, altered mental state or stroke, for example. So which is the uh, uh, atherosclerosis. Okay, as well as the carotid artery stenosis. So, for purpose of this uh, uh, webinar today, so we just focus on this to evaluate the atherosclerosis and also the carotid artery stenosis. So now we move the uh, anatomy and sono uh, anatomy of the uh, carotid uh, artery. Uh, as Dr. Adi, you know, cover the head. Now I basically cover the neck. Okay, so we actually complement each other. So as we all know, if you can see here, the uh, structure of uh, uh, you know the our uh, cervical uh, vessel, we can see is came out from the IOT arch, and we can see here a brachiocephaly artery. A right subclavian artery and goes up here to uh, to uh, form the common carotid artery on the right side and ECA and also the ICA here. Uh, for the uh, left side, so it's uh, you know straight branch from the uh, uh, IOT arch. A CCA actually formed straight away from the uh, IOT arch and uh, uh, branches into ICA and ECA. And of course, we have a normal variant that we need to consider when we uh, perform the carotid uh, Doppler ultrasound. As we can see here, we have uh, uh, panel A, B, or figure A, B, C, and D. Uh, this basically A and B is the, 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 the human um, basically uh, arch. Huh? And the most common is the A, like I uh, uh, mentioned just now. We can see here uh, the variant actually refer to the relationship the you know the ori uh, origin of uh, innominate or brachiocephalic from the IOT arch. Uh, this is the most common variant, uh, human variant, and followed by uh, the panel B. If you can see here, the brachiocephalic uh, become a common carotid artery and branches to ECA and ICA up here, and the CC is basically derived from the IOT arch. But here we can see the CCA on the left side basically uh, came out from the uh, brachiocephalic. Down here, the panel C and D or figure C and D basically what they call the bovine arch. So basically it's not the uh, human uh, variant. Okay. So again, when we uh, look into the landmark uh, uh, over the neck, you can see here clearly uh, on the right side, uh, the brachiocephaly again, the uh, branches from the uh, IOT arch. So uh, it, it become the right CCA and we can see here ICA and ECA and um, subclavian as well as the right vertebral artery. So for purpose of this uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound to the discussion, we only focus on the uh, CCA, ICA and uh, ECA. Okay, so one of the biggest uh, ch challenge uh, or uh, people struggle uh, to identify is to carotid artery as well as the external carotid artery. So this is quite, quite, uh, uh, some people find this very difficult, but there's a few ways uh, to uh, differentiate it. So number one is the size. Uh, most of the time the ICA is much, much uh, bigger compared to the to the ECA, uh, more thinner, and uh, there is no branches, no branches compared to 
the lingual artery. Okay, so uh, uh, other important uh, point is the orientation. I mean, the position of the ICA, a uh, little bit more posterior and lateral, whereby the uh, ECA, anterior and medial. And sometimes we, we think uh, vice versa, we think the ICA should be medial, but actually the ICA is uh, lateral and posterior compared to the uh, ECA. And the other important point is the uh, waveform. The, uh, this is where we uh, learn after this about the spe spectral Doppler. Okay, of course the waveform, if, if we compare with the uh, ICA and ECA, we can see low RI. I think Dr. Adi, uh, I mean, uh, discussed about the resistive index. Of course, uh, logically, the our ICA, which is supply our brain, should be in low RI, you know, uh, compared to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, ECA, which is a uh, 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 high uh, risk, risk index. So people also uh, 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 perform what they call it a temporal tap. Um, honestly, I, I, I never performed this uh, temporal tap. When uh, temporal tap means when you, you put the probe at the, uh, the ICA or especially the ECA, you tap at the uh, temporal artery. Basically, you can see the spike here, the, the spike of the uh, uh, you know, waveform. So that's to indicate this uh, ECA. Uh, so in, in, uh, in ICA, basically, this is a negative temporal tap. Okay. So this uh, 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 the sono uh, um, anatomy of the carotid. If you can see here from the transverse images, okay, on, on the right uh, ICA, okay, uh, we start down here, sorry, start uh, uh, the top figure here. This is the common carotid artery, okay? And we, when we move up, uh, we can see uh, the different uh, structure of the two structure, ICA and, and ECA, at the bigger size compared the ICA bigger size compared to ECA and and uh, we can see the uh, we can see if, if we see from the you know uh, uh, from the uh, image itself the ICA is posterior posterior and lateral compared to the ECA which is anterior and medial okay and of course uh, if we can see the branch definitely it's the ECA because ICA don't have the branch at the uh, cervical uh, uh, level. So they have the higher up uh, branches, which is the, the uh, you know, sort of a, uh, circle of release. And uh, when we perform the longitudinal view, okay, so we might see this, um, you know, uh, two important structure. Some people, uh, some people see the tuning fork view where we, you see the uh, ECA, uh, the top one, and ICA down here, and we see the carotid bulb. Okay, carotid bulb is a very important landmark, as well as the CCA uh, uh, proximal to it. Okay, and this is again the uh, uh, you know the uh, another view uh, that we can see uh, the carotid bulb ICA as well as the CCA. Okay, so again uh, the resistant index, uh, resistant patterns of ICA and ECA. I guess uh, Dr. Adi already uh, explained a uh, little bit about the PSV and EDV. Okay, the peak systolic velocity and N uh, diastolic velocity. Okay, this is one of the spectral uh, Doppler. When people talk about spectral Doppler, uh, basically we are looking into the, not only the flow, we are looking into the velocity. And also we are looking into the acceleration. That's why we, uh, velocity, I mean the spectral, I mean we, uh, we, we, we uh, look at the waveform, which is looking at the velocity over time. Eh? So we can see the waveform and analyze that. That's basically the, the spectral Doppler. So uh, uh, here, when we uh, uh, look, perform the uh, spe spectral Doppler, okay, uh, what we can see here, the uh, PSV uh, and EDV, uh, if we compare the ICA and the ECA here, uh, you can see the peak velocity is lower uh, compared to the uh, in, uh, ECA. Okay, uh, but you see here that EDV, the end diastolic velocity basically is higher compared to the uh, EDV at the uh, ECA. Uh, because uh, based on this formula, the resistive index, uh, uh, the, the, the diastolic velocity is very important, uh, whereby if, if the uh, higher EDV <clears throat> indicate, when we, we you know, calculate using this formula, we found that uh, the EDV usually is higher uh, com, uh, and then the uh, R, R, RI will be less than one, you know, so indicate a low RI. But uh, if compared to the uh, ECA, the EDV is uh, lower, 
uh, and uh, PSV is higher. Uh, some people said that the, 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 the simple rule is uh, you see normally the difference of PCV and EDV in ICA roughly about you know uh, less than 50, 30 to 40, but in, in, uh, in ECA normally it's higher, 40, 50 above. So that's to differentiate between the ICA and ECA. So what I'm telling you now is to how to differentiate first because uh, is some people struggle to get this, uh, you know, this uh, image. Okay, so we move to basic Doppler ultrasound. Okay, just sit back and relax. Okay, you may uh, get some coffee. Okay, so uh, again, like I mentioned, this is spectral waveform. We can't run away when we perform the uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound. We need to perform spectral waveform. Like I mentioned, what is spectral waveform? So we uh, study on the direction, direction either above or below the baseline. We can see here. Uh, if you, we look at the waveform, uh, we have the velocity at the y and time at the x-axis. So if above uh, uh, the baseline mean is towards the probe. So and the velocity, we also study about velocity. How far it's away from the baseline? Okay. And of course, the uh, we have the uh, slope. I think that I talked about just now about the slope of the uh, upstroke, you know, the slope of the peak system velocity. So we, we study the, the pattern of the uh, waveform itself. Uh, bear in mind that uh, every vessel have their own, you know, uh, spectral uh, waveform. So we cannot say the uh, for for example, TCD just now is. It's so different with the uh, uh, carotid uh, waveform and also other renal artery, you know, the, uh, for example, a hepatic artery. So they have different, different, different waveform and different, different area. They have diff either high or low uh, RI depend on, on the organ, uh, organ function. Okay. So before we proceed, I guess uh, Dr. Adi also highlighted this, but again, I try to emphasize when we do the, 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 do the, do the spectral Doppler ultrasound, the Doppler angle is very, very important. Okay, uh, as we uh, discussed earlier, the optimal should be less than 60 degrees, because as we can see here, if 90 degrees, there will be no signal. Okay, the cosine is zero. Okay, so if more than 60, also not good. So they, they, they will be inaccurate of the measurement. So uh, what you, we can see here, what we can see here, I just illustrate that uh, we can see when we want to perform the uh, spectral Doppler, uh, we put the uh, a B mode, we put the color flow, and we put the pass wave Doppler. So this, the green, uh, dotted line basically represent the ultrasound beam okay and we can see the vessel here okay the flow is uh, towards um, uh, this side you can see from right to left and dotted line is the ultrasound beam and the blue line in the, the uh, okay uh, so the, the blue line actually indicate the the flow direction okay and the yellow line is sample volume or gate. Okay, so the important here is the angle between the uh, the beam, okay, the beam, and also the you see the blue line here, basically the flow direction. It, it should be less than sixty degree. And the sample sample volume here, the gated, where we interrogate here, roughly about two to four mm. Uh, so roughly people play around with the two mm because this area we want to study about the waveform. Okay, so I hope uh, all of you understand about this. Okay, so uh, how, to, how to get the uh, less than 60 degree? How to get the uh, 30 or 60 degree? So basically one of the method they call heel and toe technique. Uh, like uh, we discussed earlier, if you put 90 degree, you, you can't see any flow because cosine is zero. But if you uh, put the probe here, and you either press at the heel or two of the probe, you might get this, you know, the angle correctly. So this is a simple technique. They say uh, you press it a bit. Hello, in Kelantan, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not tilting, rocking, is it? You will not tilting. You rock a little bit the probe. Either the calflet or the caudal. So you might get this, uh, this, this angle. Huh? So and don't forget about the color box. This is a color box. Huh? So the color box also is very, very important. I know this is very, very technical. <clears throat> That's why um, actually 
uh, even though it looks looks like difficult, but uh, if you have a, a good machine, basically, so they have the all the uh, default setting. Uh, so this, uh, you know, the color box, the diagonal uh, is very important. Uh, the direction of the uh, of the of the you know the color box itself. Uh, uh, you see the diagonal; it should be follow the direction of the vessel itself. Okay, there's a few tips. Uh, okay, so now uh, how we perform the uh, acrostom. Okay, uh, for carotid Doppler, uh, the uh, position. So you can either uh, overhead position, use both hands for examination, uh, a right hand for right carotid artery, and left hand for left carotid artery. Or you may use uh, sit in the you know, lateral position. So right hand for both carotid arteries. Uh, normally, normally we uh, commonly uh, sit, you know, in the uh, uh, or, or um, uh, in lateral position patient. Okay. So, um, how about patient position? Just now the uh, operator position. A, a pillow is not uh, necessary. <clears throat> Sorry. So the optimal patient head position is tilted about 40, 45 degree away. So, um, if possible, we tilt the patient head forty five degree to uh, opposite side. Okay. <clears throat> the neck of patient should be relaxed. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, contraction of the sternocleal muscle, muscle cause poor sonic contraction and make positioning of the probe uh, difficult. So <clears throat> it's very difficult to make, make sure <clears throat> patient a little bit uh, uh, relaxed, especially at the uh, sternal uh, uh, mustard muscle. Okay. So how about probe selection? I guess um, as the superficial structure, the best probe is the linear probe, which is a high frequency probe. Okay. The high frequency probe. Okay, like we uh, I mentioned earlier, so uh, role of uh, carotid Doppler at the moment. Uh, I know there's a other role of uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound. There's many many ways to do, uh, many indication to look for. But for the purpose of the discussion, I guess especially in emergency setting itself, I think it's, it's enough for for us, for us at the moment to evaluate the atherosclerosis of carotid artery and to identify the carotid artery stenosis. Okay, now we start with the how we evaluate the atherosclerosis of carotid artery. Okay, what things to look for? So we look for number one, we want to look for the intimal medial thickness, IMT. And we look for the plaque morphology. So we look in terms of the ecogenicity, the surface, and the ulceration, if you can see from the plaque itself. And of course, there is a, a newer method. They uh, use the what so called the plaque volume, especially in uh, you know um, uh, advanced uh, uh, software, whereby they can they can calculate the plaque volume. Um, I guess uh, this third, third uh, assessment is uh, we don't have in our center, and I uh, basically uh, I never practiced this about the uh, looking into the measure measure of uh, plug volume, which is three D. Uh, and it, we need the higher uh, end of the uh, uh, ultrasound or software. Okay, so why uh, we need to look for uh, I, IMT, intimal media thickness? Uh, as we all know, that is a parameter of atherosclerosis. And in fact, the IMT is the uh, independent, uh, independent risk factor for stroke and also myocardial infarction. And most of the time, we measure a distal CCA, distal common carotid artery. I will show you later. The IMT should be measured on segment without a focal lesion. This is a very important statement. So if you see the any plug, so we, we need to move away from the plug. We, we try to uh, measure at the uh, uh, straight line. Eh? Uh, automated tool for measuring the IMT, yes. Uh, nowadays, uh, most of the our ultrasound have the uh, auto -cal. Uh, They have the software auto uh, calculation. So hit the button of IMT, so they will help you to uh, identify and uh, calculate the uh, intimal media thickness. And we take the cutoff point is a one mm, uh, less than one considered normal, more than one considered abnormal. Okay, so where we should measure, as uh, we discussed earlier, uh, it should be at the distal end of CCA. Okay, if we, we if you look at here, imaging and measuring the IMT. We need to use the high uh, resolution image, okay. Uh, and of course, for this linear measurement, we use a uh, angle ninety degree. 
perpendicular to the vessel. Okay, and most of the time we use the far field. Here is a far field, it's a near field, or a sample called near 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 wall. It's a far wall, so we measure at the far wall or far field, uh, and some is enough to uh, for for. This discussion we measure at the posterior wall, at uh, sorry, the, the far wall. But for the research purpose, sometimes they measure both the anterior and posterior or near wall and far wall. And where we should measure at least 5 mm proximal to distal end of CCA. So that's why it's very important. We uh, in longitudinal view, uh, we need to see the tuning fork just now I mentioned. So to get the uh, bifurcation here, distant roughly about 5 mm and where uh, and they put the measurement. Uh, at, at that point. So measure a segment which is free of atherosclerotic plug, measure in straight segment at least 10 mm. So the 10 mm, they uh, actually it, for a uh, new machine, a trust sound, they have the uh, frame box already uh, measuring 10 mm. It's auto calculation. So they will, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to fix, you know, the, 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 uh, the box itself uh, 10 mm long, okay? And what we want to look for, basically, uh, looking into the ecogenicity of the IMT. Okay, this is what I have been um, uh, talking about just now. The uh, when we get the tuning fork view, you, we can see the ECA and ICA uh, bottom here. Also, this is a far wall and this is a near wall. So roughly about five mm from here. If there is no fork collision here, you might uh, uh, measuring here. You know, the, the, this area. A segment for CIMT, the carotid uh, intermediate thickness measurement at the distal CCA, so distal here, okay, and we measure the thickness uh, between the intima and advantage, okay, here. So some machine have the uh, auto call, you just hit the button, so they will measure for you. Okay, so uh, next will be the plug morphology. Sorry for the busy, uh, uh, a lot of wording here, but just focus on the uh, red color. So uh, uh, what we want to look for the ecogenicity, uh, ecogenicity of the plug, uh, the surface, and also the ulceration. Okay, we look into the ecogenicity of the plug, the surface of the plug, as well as the, the ulceration, because it can predict the future cardiovascular event or uh, a neuro a, a, a neuro event. So the ecogenicity of the plug could be described as one of ecogenic plug. So normally at Rasong, you use uh, isoequate, hypoequate, hyperequate. So this here, ecogenic plug, which is similar as uh, hyperequate, uh, isoequate plug, and also the ecolucin or uh, hypoequate plug, and some with the mixed uh, ecogenicity. So isoequate plug means the ecogenicity of the plug is the same as that of intima media complex, okay? So the key point uh, uh, the, uh, to differentiate is the hypo or hypo uh, equi. So uh, first we see it should be the, the plug, the plug itself should be uh, the, 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 the reference is the intima media complex uh, 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 ecogenicity. Okay, if the plug is uh, brighter than the uh, intima media complex, meaning that this uh, consider hyper equi. Okay. So how about the plug surface? We only can describe either smooth, irregular, or ulcerated. So plug ulceration is associated with increased risk of stroke. The depression of the plug surface by more than 2 mm is thought to uh, basically indicate the uh, ulceration. So rarely I you know, measure about this. Uh, important, uh, we look at the uh, ecogenicity and surface of the plug. Okay, so this is scoring uh, about the plug uh, ecogenicity. Uh, that we have the uh, grade one or type one up to grade three. So either a grade one, basically uh, eco poor or basically hyperlucent or eco uh, uh of the plug. And uh, down here, the type five or grade five basically classified, uh, meaning that it's an eco bright or hyper hyper equic. So uh, uh, what are the significance of this? Uh, if we can see a patient, uh, the plug basically look uh, hypo. Ecolucin or hypoequate basically increase the risk of fracture. If classified, no, we not worry much. I mean, for us, not worry much because all the classified, the risk of of a rupture and and emboli is not is not much compared to the the, the new uh, plug that that, that former. Uh, you know, like uh, grade one, grade two. Okay. For the um, uh, uh, type two, type three. Uh, so basically, uh, looking into the mixed ecogenicity, which one is uh, a dominant, either either hypo 
or a hyper. Okay. This is uh, an example of the uh, looking at the uh, morphology of the plug, either longitudinal and transverse view at the uh, at distal CCA. What we can see here, of course, here you see, uh, I can say this uh, uh, type two because we uh, could see the little bit hypo uh, dominant by hypoequic plus the hypoequic. But here you, you might see this uh, recalcified one. So this Okay, consider uh, uh, you know mixed echogenicity, but you know uh, consider uh, type two or type three. So we, we need we need to be uh, careful in this uh, in this kind of plug morphology because there will risk of the rupture later. So this is a transverse view of the um, uh, plug itself. Yeah. Structure. So next will be the plug volume. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't have this. Uh, we I uh, never um, done this uh, method of plug volume because we don't have the uh, 3D uh, ultrasound. But uh, I just let us know that uh, uh, out there, uh, people, especially in possible uh, in other uh, for the research purpose, I guess. So they they measure the plug volume. Uh, I also asked our friend in radiology, so they also not basically not measure about this, not measure about the plug volume. But if, if you have this, so it's good to uh, monitor uh, uh, for atherosclerosis uh, treatment. So the plug volume is known to increase uh, without treatment and decrease with statin uh, treatment. So it, it's good to, to have this. This is how, how actually they, they measure the, 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 plug, the plug volume. Uh, they need to have the 3D uh, uh, across on. Okay, uh, this is an example of uh, plug morphology at the uh, carotid bulb. Okay, you can see here. So this is uh, a calcified. So this consider you know uh, almost type five. So we not worry much at the um, this type of the plug. But I guess uh, you know uh, this uh, patient maybe need to uh, we need to further investigate lah. Uh, uh, how uh, uh, how bad in term of sometimes when we have plug uh, there will be a uh, stenosis around that so we need to to identify uh, the degree of uh, uh, the uh, stenosis is it significant or not okay I think uh, we finish about the evaluating the atherosclerosis uh, of carotid artery to recap what we want to look for we look at the uh, morphology okay uh, no uh, we look at the intimal middle thickness. Number two, we look at the plug morphology. The plug morphology, we look for the echogenicity, we look for the surface, and we also look for the, you know, the uh, uh, ulceration if we have the, the, the skill to do that. And last, uh, we're going to discuss about the carotid artery stenosis. Okay, again, uh, it is very important because when we want to perform the carotid artery stenosis and we want to perform the Doppler ultrasound, so uh, the knowledge of uh, Doppler angle uh, is vital. Okay, so to obtain proper color Doppler image, eh? so we just play around with the color Doppler and pass through Doppler only to get this uh, uh, waveform. Okay, so where we should measure? Okay, uh, uh, location at which spectral Doppler. I hope you uh, now you understand what is mean by spectral Doppler. Uh, compared to the you know normal color Doppler, okay, Spe spectral Doppler again. I I re-emphasize that the we study on the uh, uh, the waveform. We study the the, the not only the direction of the blood flow. We study also the velocity uh, over time. We look at the the, the, the waveform. That is uh, spectral. So when we talk about spectral, we need to have we either use the pulse Doppler or CW uh, uh, continuous with Doppler. But for this uh, purpose of uh, measuring the carotid Doppler ultrasound we only use pass with Doppler. Okay, like TCD just now, we use only pass with Doppler. Okay, so the location at which spectral Doppler recording should be performed, uh, the red color here, a positive which are required even in a minimal protocol. So they have the extended protocol, but I think for us, uh, 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 we look into distal CCA and proximal ICA, where the most common site for you know, plug formation, as well as the, uh, uh, the carotid uh, um, um, stenosis. So yellow position for an ascent protocol. In addition, the spectral Doppler should always, always be performed at and distal to a suspected stenotic lesion. Okay, word here is we should measure at, at and distal to a suspected stenotic lesion. I will show you later. Okay, so before we go further, it's very important for us to 
uh, you know, pattern recognition, uh, look into the normal waveform of the CCA, ICA, and ECA. Uh, okay, so if, if, if you look at here, uh, forget about the VA, it's a vertebral artery, so we're not going to discuss here. So uh, if you look at here, the CCA and ICA is, is almost similar, uh, uh, but the peak state velocity is a little bit higher compared to the uh, ICA. And again, the EDV is, is almost, almost similar, or well, even though the CCA basically mixed between ICA and ECA, but ICA should have the low RI, low risk index. If you compare here, you know, it's a very high peak state velocity in ECA as well as the lower end acid velocity. That's why they have the high RI, okay? So this is uh, an example of uh, the uh, uh, difference, to differentiate between ICA and ECA. Again, I just uh, uh, show you that the, the peak state velocity normally is lower in ICA. 58 cents uh, cm per second, uh, EDV roughly about a uh, little bit higher compared to the uh, ECA because of the uh, low RI. But in ECA, they have the higher PSV uh, and lower uh, EDV to make it a uh, uh, higher uh, RI. Okay, so where actually the possible uh, uh, stenosis happen? The most common site actually at the proximal ICA, I just uh, straight mention the proximal ICA as well as the at the bifurcation or some uh, mention about distal CCA, common carotid artery, the uh, proximal uh, ICA as well as the at the bifurcation. This three is most common site, uh, you know, the carotid artery stenosis or uh, occlusion. Okay, uh, I know um, outside there is a uh, many uh, scoring system uh, they have been used, but the uh, for the purpose of this discussion, I actually uh, follow what they have been used in USM, our radio clinic. So they use this Doppler criteria for diagnosis of ICA. Uh, of course, uh, no need to remember the, the numbers. The important for us is to uh, look at the, the severe uh, form of the ICA, which is 70% uh, uh, stenosis with the PCA velocity more than 200 and uh, the ratio ICA, CCA, PCV ratio more than four because uh, this actually requires surgical uh, in intervention. Okay, uh, some study they use uh, 50 uh, of, uh, of the uh, cutoff uh, uh, to, to identify the severe stenosis, but uh, uh, maybe our colleague uh, Neuro uh, know better than me. So what they found that in terms of uh, treatment, uh, either uh, 50 or 70, they found that the severe more than 70% occlusion is had the uh, uh, good outcome. And I mean, uh, benefit when they proceed surgery, uh, beneficial in occlusion if more than 70%. Uh, so of, uh, of course the PCV uh, normal, it should be one to five, but uh, just focus here, uh, 230 cm per second, and the ICA CCA ratio should be more than four. Other basically near total occlusion, total occlusion. Of course, they have a NAS, NAS, if not mistaken, other scoring system, but the uh, that I mentioned, so we use here the uh, Radiology Society of North America uh, criteria. Whatever you use, it's, it's, uh, uh, the scoring uh, doesn't matter. Uh, before uh, we uh, measure, I think this is very impo important slide to talk about the stenosis, the principle of stenosis. Um, when you find the uh, narrow lumen or, or, or uh, stenosis, like I mentioned earlier, you need to measure uh, at and uh, you know and the you know a distal to the distal to the uh, uh, stenosis. Uh, you know why? Because in this diagram uh, uh, illustrate very well. Uh, if the stenosis is around here, and this is upstream, and it's downstream, basically the proximal and distal. So when we put the our uh, pulse wave Doppler, so you, you might see the uh, high risk index in proximal area. And when we put at, at the stenosis itself, so you might see very high PSV, peak systolic velocity. And of course, uh, uh, if you put the, uh, the, the, the spectral Doppler here, you might see the spectral broadening. You see the very wide, uh, high, uh, you know, op open up of the uh, uh, EDV itself. I mean, the, the, the size of EDV. So, uh, but more uh, interesting is uh, when we put in a distal, which is the, the, the point that uh, we need to do, uh, you can see the, what they call the TARDIS-PARVUS waveform. 
okay, at the distal or downstream. So we need to measure, uh, if you find any lesion and you put at the uh, stenosis and put at the distal. So uh, you might see uh, all, the, all the changes of this uh, waveform. So what, what is stardust pulvus? Stardust pulvus, basically the uh, stardust mean the slow upstroke. As we discussed just now, it, it should be the, uh, you know, uh, upstroke of the PSV is, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, not like, uh, you know, it, it should be fast upstroke, you know, so sharp one. So in stardust, basically it's referred to the, uh, slow upstroke where by the time to peak more than 70 milliseconds. And pulvers mean uh, you look at the, the amplitude of the, of the uh, waveform. Uh, you, you see a uh, little bit uh, uh, broadened, okay? So, and, and it's not really sharp. Huh? So this is what I call the TADAS pulvers normally happen at the, not the upstream stenosis, normally at the, at the downstream uh, stenosis. So this is an example of the uh, uh, stenosis. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the proximal ICA and the CCA is, is the most common site. When we put the uh, pulsary Doppler here, we might see the PSV 300 cm per second, whereby if, if we refer to the scoring system, if PSV more than roughly 200 basically is indicate a 70% uh, uh, occlusion. Okay, uh, but in CCA it looks uh, normal. Right? CCA looks normal, roughly about 56 cm per second. So the lesion is around the proximal ICA. And uh, this uh, example of uh, uh, the stenosis, when uh, you put the uh, pulsar Doppler at the stenostic area, you might see the PSV uh, more than 200, eh? more than 230, which is the occlusion uh, more than 70%. And if we move uh, to distal, you might see this what we mentioned earlier, the TARDIS pulvers waveform. Uh, it, it should be the waveform at the distal IC is, is like normal ICA waveform. If you see, if you happen to put the probe or the, the beam uh, basically at the post uh, uh, stenotic area, and you see this TADIS waveform, basically you uh, actually give hint to you, maybe there is the uh, stenos uh, stenotic at the proximal area. Okay, because if we compare the left ICA and distal ICA, the waveform should be like this. Okay. So um, it is very important. That's why they advocate to uh, uh, measure at the end of the uh, common uh, the, the, the stenosis and also uh, distal part of the uh, stenosis. Okay. So last, I, I guess um, uh, the, the diameter reduction. So people like to use uh, eyeballing technique. So uh, uh, diameter reduction and area reduction. So this method has been advocated also, but uh, uh, it's not routinely used because uh, uh, we can't see the extension of the uh, plug itself or the uh, stenosis. But if uh, we can use this as screening tools uh, to, to indicate the how much the, if you use diameter reduction, uh, you can use this formula. If we use area reduction, we can use this formula. So more than 50% reduction, so indicate patient having, you know, uh, 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 um, severe um, uh, uh, occlusion, yeah. Uh, before I end, this, uh, there is another uh, rule of uh, uh, carotid Doppler apart from evaluating atherosclerosis, determine the uh, carotid artery uh, uh, stenosis. So we also can use uh, uh, you know, our, our ultrasound to detect the uh, intimal flag, basically looking into the uh, carotid uh, uh, dissection. So, so it, like, I think Dr. Adi also mentioned the same thing here uh, before this about the uh, carotid uh, dissection. Okay, uh, before I end, uh, any evidence? Uh, when I search around, uh, focus in uh, detecting stenosis, uh, it, basically it's not many, many uh, publication uh, around, uh, like I mentioned in, uh, during my uh, earlier presentation. So this study uh, in uh, Ottawa, can emergency phys physician perform carotid artery focus to detect stenosis in patients with TIE and stroke 
this uh, uh, pilot study. So they conducted a focus on uh, 75 patients. And um, what they found that the uh, carotid focus performed as follows. Uh, the sensitivity roughly about 70%. Okay, uh, uh, to rule out eh, 70%, but the specificity roughly about 86%. Uh, uh, percent. So when, when uh, we, we go deeper, uh, how the, they perform this uh, podcast, basically they use the uh, only two, uh, two methods. I mean, uh, only B mode and color flow. So they, use, uh, they don't use the spectral Doppler. So that's why the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, sensitivity is not uh, good. So what they did, basically, basically they just eyeballing technique uh, by looking at the B mode, uh, longitudinal image of ICA with free floating thrombus greater than 50% stenosis. So this considered positive uh, in their study. And uh, the other method, they use the color flow, look at the you know, a turbulent flow or aliasing uh, to indicate the 50% uh, stenosis. So the uh, methodology only looking at this, okay, uh, B mode and color flow, which is uh, not the spectral Doppler itself. So I guess to increase the sensitivity and, and no specificity is good if we can uh, combine the, uh, both the B mode color flow plus the spectral Doppler especially in detecting the carotid artery stenosis. So uh, this um, uh, paper in 2006, uh, probably a Lancet, I think quite old paper, but the uh, CD, uh, CDUS, uh, sometimes you intentionally you uh, find the term duplex ultrasound. Uh, basically duplex uh, is uh, what I have been discussed. Uh, they uh, include the spectral Doppler ultrasound. So it, it's quite interesting. Uh, to look for uh, the CDUS compared to intraarterial uh, cerebral angiography for diagnosis of 70% stenosis had roughly about 89% sensitivity and 84% sensitivity, which is quite good for, for, for us. So that's why I advocate to use the both, uh, you know, the color flow, uh, the B mode plus the uh, spectral Doppler. Uh, bear in mind, we have challenges, especially those high BMI patients with short neck. So it's very difficult. And of course, some patients have the you know high bifurcation of IC and ECA, so very difficult. So we can uh, you know differentiate. We can in fact we we couldn't find where actually the uh, uh, bifurcation. Uh, calcified atroma covering most of the carotid artery, so uh, it, it sometimes gave a poor echo window for us. And in case of contralateral carotid artery stenosis. You know, the PCV can be falsely elevated without significant stenosis. So, so make sure we always compare the right and left. So in conclusion, so I guess the, um, I, I take up the challenge to talk about the carotid Doppler ultrasound. Uh, I think this is a very good uh, screening tool, especially in ED or in, in wards. Uh, sometimes we want to, you know, to uh, not to push our colleague from radio, but you know, uh, humbly request for them when we found this uh, significant plaque, significant stenosis. Can so um, you know, uh, some people talk about to uh, you know, ascultate uh, and and to to to. to to find a, 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 a brewery, uh, you know, sometimes it's quite, quite difficult. So uh, instead of listening uh, uh, with the ultrasound, we can see straight away the, where actually the uh, stenosis is. Uh. And of course, uh, I, regardless of TCD or a carotid Doppler, it's operator dependent. So we need to practice, 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 especially the spectral Doppler. But I guess uh, with, with a good training, I guess we can perform that very well about the spectral Doppler. Just bear in mind your Doppler angle. And uh, I know some institutions have their own protocol. So, uh, so just follow your uh, institutional uh, protocol. What I mentioned uh, here is basically just a screening tool uh, as a focus uh, uh, practitioner to identify uh, ateroma and as well as the carotid artery stenosis. Uh, okay, a uh, huge thank uh, everyone. For, thank you for listening. So this is uh, uh, my reference. Uh, uh, I would like to thank our friend from uh, USM as well. This few imp few interesting lecture on the uh, carotid Doppler ultrasound. Uh, if you have any question, yeah, you may. Um, okay, thank you. Kembali ke Sri Pentas. Thank you. Right. Terima uh, kasih, Thank you. Okay, Dr. Hashari, uh, for the. For the talk again, I think to a lot of us is is in productions.
to the use of carotid uh, Doppler ultrasound in emergency setting. So as you said, uh, we need practice. Okay, we need to be introduced to it, know how to use it. Okay, as you said in your lectures, and then uh, know what to look for. So basically, the atherosclerosis and also the stenosis. All right. Um, uh, I opened uh, for question from the audience. Uh, so far, I have seen one uh, question uh, from the chat. Okay. Uh, from Wong Chok Kai. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Madia Hash, uh, Dr. Shari, for your insightful lecture. Is the morphology and surface features of carotid artery sclerosis similar to the interpretations of direct signs for aortic dissection? If the dissection detected to CCA, can we still perform uh, the Doppler study? Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I guess this is a very interesting question. Uh, how we want to differentiate between uh, dissection uh, and also the plug up, um, um, morphology. So one of the simple way they said the uh, you put the uh, uh, spectral Doppler, you put the uh, pulse Doppler at the force lumen, uh, you might see the waveform. But in plug, normally you can't see the, uh, the, the waveform. Uh, and of course, uh, you, you might see the, uh, the you know, the uh, uh, that section itself. So that section itself uh, sometimes is, uh, you know, longer. Uh, uh, and of course, the surface uh, should be smooth compared to the plug itself. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answer. Okay. Question from Nina is USM practicing carotid Doppler screening at EPOTIA <laughs> or still? <laughs> okay. Thank you. I guess after this lecture, we practice. <laughs> No, basically, yeah, for, for, for the past, I think this year we started to uh, practice this uh, and, and we have uh, uh, interest from our neuro team. And so we might, uh, you know, uh, incorporate in a part of the assessment uh, in any stroke patient uh, present uh, to ED. Uh, I encourage our, our MMAT, our student, not only in stroke patient, any syncop uh, syncope patient, you know, uh, so you, you, TIA patient, of course, TIA, you know, uh, you might uh, consider to, to actually uh, perform the carotid Doppler because it will, uh, uh, you know, facilitate well uh, patient uh, movement. Uh, uh, we have very good cooperation with our radio team uh, as well as the, our vascular team here. Yeah, thank you. All right, okay, uh, I can see Dr. Ashraf is uh, raising his hand. Okay, Dr. Ashraf. Thank, thank you, Dr. Tashiri, thank you for a very, yeah. very good lecture. Um, uh, called maybe I can share. So uh, in certain country, developed country, uh, there's two two paradigm. One is TIA, TIA fast uh, referral model, but I think in Malaysia, we are the second version where patient usually admit uh, or come to ED and do all the imaging. Totally agree with you. Very difficult to get um, called uh, imaging of CTA. Uh, carotid Doppler is very, very relevant, uh, similar like Dr. Adi just now. I think we should uh, activate this and if Prof. Uh, Hashari can 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 lead, uh, call the what we call this in, in when I was in training in Melbourne, kita panggil uh, this as uh, fast track uh, called uh, admission. So uh, yeah. emergency physician are getting it 24 hours and then uh, if the carotid is clear, then uh, you can discharge the patient. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if, if uh, many people are well trained, especially uh, emergency physician, we can yeah. do this because of this is more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Agree, Tasha. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, info. I think uh, this is the the, the way forward, Tasha. Because uh, uh, I think because the, the compared to the you know uh, uh, easily uh, previously, I, I we in ED we use the carotid Doppler for VTI. I use uh, for VTI. I mean the fluid responsiveness. So we never thought about the this about the in, in stroke patient looking into stenosis and, and so on and so forth. So we use this persistent velocity, the flow itself for determine fluid responsiveness. But this uh, uh, new uh, tools and I think is very uh, uh, useful uh, for us. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ashara. Uh, just to add on about uh, Ashraf's uh, suggestion, I think um, the way I look at TIA you now is a bit different because uh, I do not have neurology support here. Uh, HPPM has been uh, quite kind to accept our um, patients that come in with stroke within the acceptable time. 
But uh, those who has uh, ABCD to score of less than two tends to get discharged and they are the one who comes back with uh, significant stroke symptoms later on. So uh, mm -hmm. we are trying tapi kena belajar lagi to have like a follow up clinic so that we can do um echo plus um um uh, carotid rope ultrasound as outpatient within one week time um because we also have limitations so hopefully if we can do that we can pick up more um disease carotid artery patients and yeah. refer them for a former one and perhaps they get uh treated appropriately so um hopefully this yeah, comes agree. To yeah, so I think like, 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 like before this, can uh, people, uh, people never you know really pick up PE in emergency department, yeah. you know, primary embolism, uh, and also the uh, what the other one, eh? uh, so now because of ultrasound available, so we actually pick up a lot of PE. I think, I think it's time for us now to practice the carotid Doppler. Uh, yeah, agree. Yeah, all right. Uh, I open to any other questions from the audience either through the chat or you can ask directly to Dr. Hashairi. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there, there is no more questions, okay. Uh, I, on the behalf of the Secretariat Neuroemergency Medicine SIG, okay, would like to thank you again, Dr. Hashairi Fauzi, for the talk today. So, okay, as some of us uh, described, it, it is uh, some sort of enlightenment, okay, both TCD and the carotid ultrasound Doppler in, in emergency setting, okay. We know that in other specialty, they have uh, use it uh, commonly, but I think in our setting, in emergency medicine or emergency department setting, it is still new and then there's a lot of things to learn, okay? And there is a lot of potential um, benefit uh, we can contribute uh, to the practice of medicine, especially acute setting.